Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Rocket Monday. In today's episode, we're going to discuss a very interesting topic of gravitational slingshots. So let's dive right into it. It has many names to it. Now, first, before we use uh, understand the solution, we have to understand what is the problem with our current infrastructure. Basically, our rockets are way, way, way too weak. Now, uh, you have to understand this one core aspect. Let's say you talk about the most powerful active rocket in the service right now is uh, basically falcon 9 heavy now again it is quite powerful it can carry 60 ton to low earth orbit now here's the many people just stop at there it's like okay 60 ton to low earth orbit everything is awesome now that is absolutely true it is quite uh, you know a big achievement because right now there is no module in international space station that is that big or that heavy so it is quite quite a you know a big feat however if let's say you want to send 60 ton to let's say geostationary orbit which is uh, above way above than 1000 kilometer it is is like you know around 36,000 kilometer then this rocket is like nope I can only send around 24 uh, uh, you know ton and then if you are like okay let's send something to Mars it will drop it down to like 12 to 13 ton so that is the critical aspect our rocket is ludicrously weak if we have to send anything further than let's say Earth, uh, Earth's sphere of influence basically maximum we can send is a uh, moon that's it flat out like if you want to send to mars again okay, our payload goes dramatically slower like uh, dramatically smaller and our travel time also becomes a little bit huge like you can use a small rocket to send a big payload to very far distance it's just the time it will take would be too huge basically you can go from uh, let's say if, uh, in case of india india had a small rocket in and it still had to do lunar mission so what we did we did uh, basically orbit uh, raising maneuver brick by brick day by day here's the problem it took 40 days to reach to moon so you can easily imagine why it takes like like around two years to reach to Mars we can do it faster just our payload size will go smaller so that is the whole context here our rockets are way too big uh, basically weak and then you have to understand space is big now we cannot truly comprehend that kind of size simply because we do not deal with light speed and uh, to give you a context or a light is the fastest thing there is in this universe now at light speed let's say you left earth and you're like okay light speed engage it will still take you one second to reach moon now again you may think okay still one second here's deal nothing can travel at light speed we cannot even travel like you know one whole percent of light speed so then then you start to realize okay even at light speed it takes that long and flat out with our practical method it could take as long as like three days to reach to moon so then you start to understand like mars takes years and if you are talking about gas giant jupiter saturn Venus, neptune pluto uh, those will take very 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 long time so things are very far apart on top of that we need speed because we can use a slower method we can send a big probe using let's say falcon heavy itself that reaches uh, you know pluto and it is like you know it is big payload uh, side effect right now if you try to do this it will only take like three tons but let's say you want to send uh, 10 tons can you do that yes it's just it will take way long time very 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 long time and we need speed not only like you know because our battery will run out because even uh, radioactive batteries also have a like you know a decay span to it and uh, not to mention uh, electronics will also fail so you have a time span you must do it as quickly as possible now uh, right now how we are managing it basically we uh, make our uh, probe whatever have you and then we balance out how much rocket do we want like if you are sending Cassini you will be like okay we want uh, this much uh, flexibility so we'll add this kind of rocket now we understand you are adding rocket on top of a rocket side effect your payload is becoming smaller let's say your original idea was like okay i'm gonna have a payload it's gonna have like you know uh, 12 cameras like hyper spectral camera like i'm from infrared to ultraviolet to this and that everything yes once you have to put rocket on top of your uh, basically probe itself you have to remove few of those cameras because you are uh, you know eating away at the space uh, basically tonnage that you are allowed so then it becomes a balancing act like uh, i can go there faster but i will not have enough instrument or i can go there slowly and i will have a lot of this instrument so that is the problem right now no, so okay, we have the problem. So what is the solution? Solution is basically utilize nature itself. Nature has a lot of celestial body, basically bodies that are in heaven. Uh, why not use that? Well, we can simply use that and we can add speed and reduce speed. Now you might be like, okay, why the heck do you want to reduce speed? Think of it this way. If you are accelerating at ludicrous speed, as in like orbital speeds or things of uh, that nature, if you go to uh, like, you know, far enough from any planet, you can just skip by it. Like you will not photograph it, you will like, done like you just never and again if you are spending hundreds of millions of dollars you cannot just sell to your like you know investors like yeah i got one foot out of that you have to slow down now again you can utilize on rockets or you can utilize gravitational assist so that is why adding speed and removing speed is very critical 
then we talk about direction change now this direction change is a kind of a odd topic because you have to understand she, uh, like entire solar system is more or less on a plane like it is like it has an elliptical orbital plane now uh, not everything in this plane is exactly at like you know zero inclination some are top or some are down and for some reason let's say you want to go on top like you want to capture uh, star systems that are below it or uh, star systems that are above us for some reason let's say you want to do that like voyager one or in uh, certain scenarios like in small scale let's say you are in jupiter or saturn and you want to capture its moon now its moon are no longer in like you know one elliptical orbit like it has multiple uh, you know uh, orbital planes so in those sort of scenarios you have to ch uh, have the ability to change your direction you can rely on you know giant boosters or you can utilize the gravity itself to change your direction that is very critical now uh, all those things uh, if you can do it properly if you can do the timing right you can have something like this like uh, this giant probe like again quote and quote giant uh, this probe is like a new horizon probe and it took 10 years to travel to Pluto now you may say 10 years is so long yes and no like for that distance it's uh, it's like it's quick it's like we went there like uh, again it took time but it was very quick and you have to understand the computer did not die while traveling that is the probe's requirement like you must send the probe while the computer is still active because even though let's say the radio isotropic generator that we have it will keep working let's say for around 20 to 25 years your computers will not work that for that long so computers are the weak point at this point and not to mention uh, the dist uh, the longer you ha have to stay in space the more things will go wrong so we also have to want to make sure like everything as fast as possible so this was a very good uh, you know demonstration of our mathematics where we can time it right so well that we can like reach to pluto in 10 years now to give you a context how far pluto is in human perspective if you are standing on pluto you will have a hard time finding sun sun will be like it's just a star now how does this whole thing work now everything in our solar system in our whole milky way is in motion basically we are going around uh, basically moon is going around us we are going around sun sun is going around the uh, milky, uh, milky way center so everything is in motion that's the first thing you have to understand now uh, gravity where everybody talks about like gravitational assist uh, gravitational slings or uh, those are kind of misnomer because gravity only gives you control like you can change the direction basically if this is the elliptical and your planet is here and you want to go down you can just aim yourself uh, upwards and gravity will help you guide downwards it will not add or remove speed from you now that may be odd like people are like okay how the heck that is happening i'm not able to add speed or remove speed think about this way. like this is your object and like this is the gravitational well and you are traveling okay and you are traveling at let's say very slow speed 100 kmph now 100 kmph the gravity starts to catch you and you're like okay 200 kmph 300 kmph 1000 kmph now here's the the moment you go across that orbital plane you'll be like okay now uh, your speed starts to go down because gravity is in negative it's working against you you are you are basically quote unquote escaping the gravity so now you have to remove the speed that you gained so basically the total net change on your speed would be zero again you will have acceleration you will have deceleration but total overall you will still, uh, still be exactly the same speed if you enter however you can steal energy from the orbit not from the gravity but from the orbit so everything that is why it is very important for you to understand everything is in motion so let's say you have neptune neptune is moving so what you will do you, you are traveling let's say whatever your velocity is let's say velocity a now gravity will not do anything of course for short while your velocity will increase because of the gravity but that's not uh, like the moment you start to leave it it will go away but because the gravity is pulling you towards the uh, orbital excess basically this uh, velocity of the neptune itself you are gaining a uh, leaching energy away from this plane basically gravity will not change but the orbital energy of the planet will so using that you can add your speed basically it's like and gravity here is just acting as a tug basically it's acting like a magnet so you're not uh, taking the energy from the magnet itself you are taking the energy from the person who's carrying the magnet so this planet in this scenario so you will slow down the planet how much again if we did that like hundreds of trillions of them then you may able to slow it down to like you know uh, around one year like it will lag one year where it's supposed to be in 100 million years so you have to understand flat out we don't have to worry about it like it's a planet it has more than enough energy for us to steal for thousands of generation so that is what's happening like you are coming here gravity is just allowing you to control now again if you time it right if your crush, uh, correctional thrusters are working properly you can aim it in any direction like you can aim it you know here or you can aim it here and if you want to slow down let's say you want to study the gas giant itself you can just instead of uh, adding this velocity you can go against it and if you do against it you will slow down so that is what we are doing we are taking the energy directly from the uh, 
orbit itself. We are not taking the energy from gravity, we are taking the energy from the orbit. This is uh, accurate term would be orbital assist. But again, this does not sound cool and gravity is helping you to control it. So that, that's why uh, like you know we say gravitational assist or planet swing short. So that's what's happening. Gravity is not adding speed, it's just giving you the control. Now probes steal orbital energy. So one of the luckiest thing we ever had is that uh, NASA was in a good place and uh, one good alignment happened that was like you know all the gas giant was aligned in a certain way now again this alignment happens every around 100 and 117 years or something like that the alignment was such that if we are uh, doing correctly like if we do everything right we can hit all the uh, gas giants in one go from Jupiter Saturn Uranus Neptune all of them in one go that was the amazing part of Voyager. Side effect, they had to do it in that time. Like you, if you miss that, that you have to wait 100 years. So you can understand that. Right? Like it was very lucky that NASA had the technology. Uh, NASA was in a good situation that it did happen. And it, it is like one of the most uh, mind boggling mission that ever was. Like uh, in terms of knowledge, not in terms of like human passion or that thing. Right? In terms of knowledge, it like it taught us so many things. Like we did not even think there could be a, you know, a volcano which is, uh, you know, spewing, uh, you know, water. But again, it taught us that. So, uh, I would urge you, like, if you really want to understand uh, space technology, the best mission ever done is like Voyager systems. Not for human reasons, for uh, scientific reasons. So, are there any limitations to this magical trick? Well, yes, timing is the key. Basically, everything relies on your perfect timing. And I mean it, like, you cannot misalign it. Like, in terms of uh, what we call window of opportunity, like, how far you can you be in plus and minus? Because we cannot be like, you know, okay, in this nanometer, I will be exactly. Like, a probe does not work with that much accuracy. But you will be like, okay, this is the window. I have to be like, you know, a plus minus one or two kilometer. It's very narrow. It's very tight. And not to mention, timing-wise, is also very tight. Like, you have to be like, let's say, on 21st January you must be here so you have to be here like if you miss it done there is no uh, second attempt here now you have to follow the timelines of the celestial body that you want to extract energy from that is the inherent limitation so if you are familiar with the fact that we have to go to Mars every two years that is the reason it's like you know the celestial body does not follow our timeline like we have to follow theirs timeline now it is very slow for humans now again if you are going to moon you can utilize gravitational assist and all that but again and if you are doing anything from lop g to uh, saturn missions and anything like that you will rely on its gravity to get as much as out uh, you know as much energy as possible however it will not be the main source of energy because if you did that as a main source of energy it simply would be too slow so if you want to let's say go to uh, titan and you want to study that for a human mission you cannot rely on gravitational assist it would be way too slow so that is the inherent limitation. It's an unmanned probe. It's awesome. For manned system, no. Now, what we can expect in the future? Now, again, uh, I made a video about uh, solar sail, light sails in uh, my Future Friday series. And uh, if we couple light sail uh, with gravitational assist, we can reach, let's say, these further objects as far as Pluto in five years. And I'm like, how the heck that's possible? Basically, we have to go towards the sun and extract the orbital energy of the sun itself. Sun has more than enough energy. And once we are in the positive side, not only we will have the energy that we steal from the orbital energy, we will also have the uh, benefit that while going, it will be like parallel like sunlight is coming it will be parallel once we are on the positive side we'll uh, you know make it a uh, 90 degree to it so we can like get the push out of it using that technology we can utilize like a ludicrously high speeds at the escape side like uh, not only we'll have orbital speed plus the high intensity photon that will push you so that is quite amazing we can achieve like there are some missions that right right now on the drawing table that can give us like amazing things like a uh, voyager 2.0 basically now, it, that is the first reason why we could even, uh, you know, do all those missions in one go. It allowed us to understand gas giants much more accurately and, uh, you know, much more controllably. Like, to give you a, a simpler understanding, it's like right now, Voyager 1 is so far away that at traveling at light speed, it will take you 19 hours at light speed. It will take you 19 hours, if not more. So that is the whole point. Like it is so far away that it exceeded, um, it's like outside of termination shock. Basically sun is moving. So it has a shock wave around it. Now that shock wave is in multiple layers. So the one of the layer is termination shock. Then you have a heliopause and then you have bow shock. Now again, when you see this sort of uh, fancy designs, you will think, okay, this is like a like, giant plasma. It's like, you know, shock wave. It's a very low density. You will, you, you cannot feel it. Like our instruments are sensitive enough. They can detect it, but it's like nothing. You cannot detect it. It's, you can, you can be here like you can literally be in bow shock and you would like 
something's supposed to be happening here it is that uh, low density like density wise it's like you know one atom per like uh, you know one meter square or something like that it's like ludicrously low density so do not think like this diagram kind of makes it sound like there is a giant shock wave going around nothing like that it's just something is there we can detect it we can measure it so we rely on that so voyager 1 is the furthest object that we ever sent utilizing the system now again the voyager 1 was like uh, done with old technology uh, what we can do with modern technology what if we had the same technology and added multiple things let's say we added light cell and then jettisoned the light cell and then utilized ion propulsion engine relying on uh, you know beta voltics or something like that again we can go very far so this was my presentation on gravitational assist i hope you liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button if you didn't like it i would urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me your extra disappointment and please leave a comment because i reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching